When cruise lines advertise their cruises, you'll see beautiful people relaxing on their balconies or enjoying massive private suites. Some modern cruise ships have over 30 different types of cabin available, and usually you'll find me cruising in the cheapest inside cabin. I recently took a cruise with Royal Caribbean where I decided to upgrade myself to a balcony. 75% of the cabins on the ship I was sailing on did have balconies and as we were cruising to Norway, which is one of the most picturesque places in the entire world, I decided to risk it and hope that it would be worth the extra cost. Lots of people book balcony cabins because they say that they need the outside space or that they need the fresh air. I definitely don't. I'm happy in the inside cabin, so I was curious about if this cruise would change my mind. I was planning on booking another cruise after this one, but I wanted to see how this one went to decide if I should book a balcony cabin again or if I should go back to my usual inside cabin. I booked what's called a guaranteed cabin, which means that I didn't get to pick my specific cabin location. Doing this did save me money, but it meant that up until a couple of weeks before the cruise, I had no idea where my cabin would be. There are 16 decks on Anthem of the Seas, which is the cruise ship I was sailing on, and I could have had a cabin anywhere from deck three all the way up to deck 13. I was hoping that I would have a cabin in the middle because I try and use the stairs wherever I can, and walking up 13 flights of stairs from from deck 3 to deck 16 just didn't seem appealing. I didn't really mind where my cabin was in terms of front, middle or back. It was more important to me that I had a location that was somewhere quiet. And as I found out on this cruise, any place on the ship can be loud. I went onto the Royal Caribbean website a couple of weeks before the cruise and I saw that we'd been given cabin 13556. Our cabin was towards the front of the ship, but I have been on cruises in the past where I've had the cabin that is as far to the front as possible, so being at the front of a cruise ship doesn't bother me. I did notice this symbol on the deck plan though, and when I looked at the key I realised that this meant that our cabin was adjoining to another cabin. Many people, including my friend Gary from the Tips for Travellers channel, avoid cabins with adjoining doors due to the extra noise that you can sometimes hear between the cabins. I asked Gary for a comment about the adjoining doors and he said that he detested, detested cabins with adjoining doors. So strong words there from Gary. Adjoining doors can be fantastic when you're using them and you know the person staying next door. We had cabins like this with adjoining doors on my first cruise when I was 11 years old and it was so much easier to just go through this door rather than going out into the corridor, knocking, waiting. It was brilliant for us. If you don't know the person next door, the doors will be locked of course. There's usually two doors, one on each side, so you can both lock your doors. Cruise ship cabins are built exactly like this, exactly how you see them. They are built like that in the shipyard and then they are just slid into the side of the cruise ship and put into place. The main central areas on the ship, like the theatre, like Sorrento's Pizza, they were on decks 4 and 5 and the buffet was up on deck 14. If I was picking a cabin location, I probably would have picked a cabin slightly further down, just because that walk from 4 to 13, we did that multiple times a day and it was quite a lot. Overall though, I think we got pretty lucky with our cabin location. Looking at the deck plans, I could see that we were opposite the stairs and the elevators, so I hope that we wouldn't have too much noise during the cruise. Sometimes you can hear people kind of walking by or people will stop here to have a conversation at the end of the night. Anthem of the Seas was built in 2015 and the fact that 75% of the cabins have balconies definitely is a reflection of that. Older cruise ships, even within the same cruise line, will have a much smaller percentage of balconies. If you have a look at Grandeur of the Seas, who is the oldest Royal Caribbean ship still sailing, only 12% of her cabins have balconies. Balconies are very popular with modern cruisers though, and on this cruise I was on a mission to find out why. First impressions of the cabin were really good, there were loads of things I liked about it and a couple of things I probably would change, as there are in every cabin I've ever stayed in. One of the things that I noticed first was the curtains, and I understand that may sound a little bit strange, but we were cruising to Norway in the summer and they have very, very long days. In June, they have around 19 hours of sunlight per day, and the curtains look like they would be good blackout curtains. Only time would tell though. The cabin that we were staying in was around 177 square feet. I've stayed in inside cabins as small as 130 square feet. And just for a bit of context, the average shipping container is 150 square feet. So this one was bigger than the average container. I did wonder if I would actually use this extra space though, because I can physically only be in one place at a time. 
Generally speaking, if you were to look at different cabin categories on the same ship, you'll see that they are very similar, if not identical in design. The only real difference between this balcony cabin and a cheaper inside cabin was that the balcony was bigger, there was more space, so there was a sofa in the middle, and of course you do get the balcony. I really like the design of this cabin, but of course design is very subjective. I like the way that the TV kind of fit into the wall, all of the drawers were soft clothes, and it just felt nicely finished. Not sure that I particularly like this art, I don't really understand what not too much, but that of course is just my taste. I would have been happy with just pictures of chocolate chip cookies, maybe ginger cats, that would have suited me fine. It didn't take long after we arrived in our cabin for our luggage to arrive too. When you take a cruise, you will leave your luggage in the terminal and it will magically appear in your cabin. It was pouring with rain when we embarked this cruise and embarkation took a little over an hour, which meant that our suitcases were very, very damp. Before when I've been on cruises and I've seen people with these plastic luggage tag holders, I've always thought to myself, oh that's unnecessary, I've never had a problem with my tags. Well, I was proved wrong. On this cruise we definitely did have a problem with ours and I have since bought some plastic tag holders. It is amazing that our luggage made it with our luggage tags looking like this, but it did. Before I stay in any cabin, I always have a look at the reviews and have a look at what other people did or didn't like. Like with any cruise ship cabin reviews, the question of storage came up again and again. We were on board the cruise for a week and after we'd unpacked our suitcases, we still had plenty of drawers and plenty of shelves spare. We didn't need all of that space. I personally can't imagine needing more space than this for two people. This is way more storage space than I have at home. If you were sharing the cabin though with three or four of you in there, you probably would need to be a bit more kind of organised with your stuff. We put our suitcases in the bottom of the wardrobe instead of under the bed as we normally would just because it was easier to access in the wardrobe and when my clothes were dirty I would just throw them straight in here. We had the space so we thought why not. They did fit under the beds, I did test them just for this video. Another complaint I hear a lot about cruise ship cabins is that there is never enough plug sockets. I'm happy to report that there were three plug sockets on the desk, two USBs and another one over by the bed. On this ship there are a combination of European and American plug sockets and if you're ever taking a cruise and you're unsure which adapters you'll need, I have an article on my website with a massive searchable table, you click on your cruise ship and it will tell you which sockets are in the cabins. I'm from the UK, we have our own plug sockets here, so we almost always need to bring adapters on cruises. After unpacking, I decided to have a proper look around the bathroom. The bathrooms that you'll find in cruise ship cabins tend to be the same across the different categories. If you have a look at the bathroom in an inside cabin and then one in a balcony cabin, chances are they're exactly the same, but every cabin does have its own private bathroom. The bathroom was spacious and clean and it felt very new and it definitely felt like a bathroom that prioritised the shower. The shower was very big, the shower was very good and it had that mysterious little step in the corner. There was also a night light in the bathroom too so when you go to the toilet at night you're not there completely in the dark. It also had a fair amount of storage for a bathroom and for some reason it had two bins. Don't know why but it had two bins. I did take a cruise once where the cruise ship bathroom had two toilet rolls a holder on both sides with two toilet rolls. Never worked out why. Bathrooms on cruise ships do get smaller than this too. The smallest one I've ever had was on board Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady and they also get much, much bigger than this. In some suites you'll find double sinks, you'll find whirlpool baths, you name it. If you have the money, you'll find it somewhere. Your Britishism of the week is this thing. This is a tap and we would never call this a faucet. I remember hearing the word faucet for the first time when I went to the States and I was very, very confused. Here, if you said that to most people, they would probably know what you mean, but we always call this a tap. If it's inside, if it's outside, it doesn't matter. It's just a tap. On a cruise, you do have the option to have your towels changed every day when housekeeping do your room. I usually don't, but the option is there. I recently said this in another video and I had so many comments telling me that I should wash my towels every single time I use them. I'm sorry, but life is way too short for that. That's way too much work for the crew and that's a massive waste of water in my opinion. I'm a firm believer and I know you watching this agree with me that we should try and make the crew's lives as easy as possible. They work really hard, they work long hours and anything we can do to help, I think we should be doing that. 
Royal Caribbean are a very American crew sign, so I was surprised to see a kettle in the cabin. It was because we were cruising from the UK, I'm sure, and they know how much we like our cups of tea. I was quite close to the buffet, so waking up and walking to the buffet to get a cup of tea wouldn't have been the end of the world, but it was so much nicer to just be able to make a cup of tea and sit in bed and drink it. One of the main reasons I hear for people not booking balcony cabins is that you don't spend much time in your cabin anyway. And when you are cruising in an inside cabin, that is absolutely true. But on this cruise, it was very, very different. The sail-ins and the sail-outs in Norway are often hours long and being able to wake up and walk one or two meters to the balcony was absolutely amazing. Our balcony was pretty big compared to balconies you'll find on some other cruise ships. Cruise lines like P&O and Princess are known for having quite shallow balconies, but ours on Anthem of the Seas felt pretty deep. We had two seats, we had a table, and because we had paid for this balcony, we were going to use it as much as we could. It definitely wasn't warm during our cruise, but that was not going to stop us from sitting outside. I would put on all of the clothes that I had and then pile anything else on top of me. I would use towels as blankets, everything. It was so worth it. I'm happy to say that the curtains were fantastic and we were never woken up by the light. It was a little bit odd to be in the cabin at say 11 p.m. in the evening and just to think, oh, I wonder if it's still light outside. You look outside and it's as light as if it's the middle of the day. Really bizarre, really, really bizarre, but you've got to see it. Our cabin TV had lots of functions, and yes, it did have an adult movie section. I recently showed a video of an MSC cruise cabin that had some adult movies on the TV, and everybody was surprised. I don't think it's that uncommon, honestly. I think most cruise lines have them, if you know where to look. I mostly used the TV to catch up on the shows of the entertainment that was going on around the ship. If we missed a game show, for example, we would always be able to watch that in the cabin. Most cruise lines don't do that. They don't have the time to record and edit and broadcast the videos every day, but Royal Caribbean do, and I really enjoyed it. We did have some extra entertainment which came in the way of our neighbours through our adjoining door. They had a couple of little kids and I think a baby and sometimes we would hear them in the morning, you know, when they're trying to get the kids out of the cabin. Sometimes you would hear the baby crying. But to be honest, it wasn't too loud and it wasn't too annoying and I kind of liked listening into their conversations. <laughs> I think it was because our bed was so far from the adjoining door and the main door too. We didn't hear any noise from outside either. I never heard anybody walking by, anybody having a conversation outside. But it was a long distance between us and the door. Some of the cabins do have the bed further into the cabin and the sofa at the other end. If that's how it was, we probably would have heard more noise. But we were very protected and we spent most of the time on the balcony anyway. We also use the TV to order room service. On some cruise lines, room service is completely free all the time. On other cruise lines, room service is never free. On some cruise lines, you have to phone down to make an order. On some, you can do it on the TV. It varies a lot by cruise line. On Royal Caribbean, you can just order on the TV, which I massively prefer, and Continental Breakfast is free. Enjoying breakfast on a balcony like this is incredible and I totally understand why some people would only choose to cruise in balconies. For me though, I am heading back in an inside. I booked a very cheap little MSE cruise when I got back from this one and an inside cabin just seemed like the right thing to do. The MSE cruise that I've booked is cheaper than a Premier Inn. That's one of the budget hotels we have here in the UK. Mind blowing. This Royal Caribbean cruise confirmed to me that although I'm definitely team inside, there absolutely are places and times where I think a balcony upgrade is worth it. Norway is incredible and I would recommend anybody cruising there to book a balcony if you can. I would have hated to have missed views like this. My balcony cabin only cost £809 per person for the week and the inside cabin wasn't much cheaper at around £600. I try to keep my budget to around £100 per person per night, including gratuities, so splashing out £115 per person per night definitely didn't seem crazy. This was one of those cruises is booked way before the pandemic. On lots of cruises you'll find that the price of a balcony is double the price of an inside and in that situation I'm always going to be in the inside cabin. To find out what it's like cruising in an inside cabin and how I deal with the lack of daylight, watch this video next. I'm kind of struggling at the moment with lack of daylight. A massive thunderstorm has come over my house since I started recording this video and it is so much darker than when I started the video. But watch this one next.